All right, so we've been talking about um, how to create and organize sort of grasshopper definitions and different ways of doing the same thing. So we started out with this sort of, you know, double row of column, which was pretty simple. And we moved from starting with the geometry to starting with a curve to starting with sort of data points. Um, and so now I want to move to something a little bit more complex. Um, and that is this guy and talk about what happens when things get sort of 2.5D um, or start to get a little bit more complex. So what if you wanted to create something like this? To use this kind of method with the column first and then kind of creating an array and copying it, it becomes fairly complex if you want to do it kind of correctly without duplicates. So basically you start with the column in the same process and you have this one and this one, right? So this one is full length. So these would be the two X versions and they are a full length. But then when you get to the Y versions, you have to pull a column out of the middle. So you have to cull one. So you have to cull one on the end, right? And on the beginning. So that gets copied over there, right? So you have those two. And then you have the interior one that has to be culled again, right? Um, so the interior one is going to be even shorter and what I decided to do for this is just make one that was only one short and then actually array it around itself. Um, so that would work. Um, so basically the shorter one gets copied, it gets one pulled off of it and then I find the center of this square of the rectangle of the um, of the rectangle by drawing a line between this this circle and this circle, which is a little bit of a pain in the butt, right? Um, and then I just array this guy around itself, right, with a four set. So like if I move this array, right, or if I make it bigger, it would be more interesting, right? So let's put this at 10. And if I array that, whoop, it just starts arraying it. But if I set it at four, it makes pretty much, right, a square around there. So I could probably go back and, and simplify this, maybe array the first one too, which would be interesting. You know, that would simplify it a little bit maybe. Um, but you can see how it can get a little complex. And I think that's um, partially because we're starting with the object first and trying to copy that object. Let's go down to the curve version of it. So this is defining a curve. So if I come in and turn this guy on, you're going to see the same sort of result, but what we're using is a rectangle and then we're offsetting that rectangle to the inside. And then we have to explode that rectangle, uh, those two rectangles, because if we try to divide a single rectangle, it divides it, sees it as one unit. And then we go in and, and divide those curves, right? And based on those curves, um, since the curves are now all individual, there are duplicate points on the sides. So we flatten the curve tree and get rid of, uh, there's a thing that will cull the duplicates out. So it gets rid of all the duplicate points. Um, the other thing we have to adjust for is the spacing on the inside for the interior columns because the division needs to be minus two for this one, right? Because this one is a certain division, then you have to get rid of two of those divisions. So you have to put together a little, you know, calculation here that takes this and divides it by that. That gives you the negative value, but this gets subtracted by two and put into the division for the interior ones. And then you place the column on it, you know, and you get, you know, whoop, this guy that works, right? So a little bit more efficient, obviously, than this guy up here. And then for the last one, it's actually data first. So let's go ahead and turn this guy on. And so what happens here is we create a square grid and that grid gives us points, right? And so if I, if I preview these points, basically the points that it gives us are all the points on the grid. Now we only want points on the first two rows, right? So we have to figure out how to get rid of all of these guys. So what we end up doing is we create a rectangle that is set to the same size as the square. So it keeps, you know, keeps going the same size. 
and then we have an offset right so we offset that curve to the interior and I'm just using a negative value of the um, size so it keeps it at a square um, and so you can see that you know that changes and then that curve so this interior curve that's the offset curve there is a node that will cull points it'll well actually it goes in and looks at the relationship between all of these points and this offset curve and the relationship is defined by a zero. Is it outside the curve? Is it coincident with the curve? Or is it inside the curve? And basically we want to get rid of all the ones that are inside the curve, right? So in, inside the curve is two. So this little guy checks to see which ones equal two. So if you take a look, right? You can t it says yes that's true or it's not a two right and then this is a cull pattern so it gets rid of the ones on the inside whoops so um, it takes the list the original list of points right and then it culls the ones that do not equal two right that are in equal and then it puts these guys on those, right? So basically, you have a pretty short definition with a bit of control, right? If that makes sense, yeah? So um, it all depends on what you're going for. So um, that's what I wanted to take a look at and just sort of show you that. So this is along the lines of the assignment of like making the various circles and triangles, except it's a column grid version of that. There are multiple ways to do everything in Grasshopper, and you're just going to have to figure out. Oftentimes, the thing that determines what you want to use um, is what you want to control and how you want to control it. And I will say, and I don't know, we can have a discussion about this in class, that as you get more complex, data-driven solutions like these down at the bottom are curve-driven solutions. Um, armature rigging-driven um, solutions tend to be more efficient, but it does require more understanding of listing and points and how those work. If you're trying to use Grasshopper um, in a similar form as Rhino, it's going to get really complex um, because you're taking an object and you're manipulating it as opposed to creating a process and applying an object to a process, if that makes any sense. Okay.